What is good? We're back. And we got JB from the Dynasty Theory, and we are going to hit you with some buy lows before it's too late ASAP. This is gold. All of the cool words that go along to make you click on things. JB, what's up, man? This is uh, FF Dynasty Theory, I guess we can we can call it, you know? I, I Sounds like you've been workshopping some names over there. <laughs> I, I can dig that. Yeah, buy low, buy now, buy. Yeah, you, you got to buy. If, if you're not buying, what are you doing? You're selling, I guess. <laughs> so we got some buys. We, we, we're going to do this on, on a Monday, right when free agency started. So we decided to push it. Um, so we might have a little overlap here on, on some guys that value may have moved a little bit, but I think it'll be a fun conversation. So JB, why don't you kick it off? Who is the first buy that you have to buy right now before it's too late? Now I've had this guy as a buy for over two years now. Yeah. So it seems like it still has not changed. I don't know if it's ever going to be too late because he's probably going to be undervalued until he retires. But for me, it's Dak Prescott. You yeah. look at all of the guys in the top three or four tiers across the, the, the quarterback position. Dak Prescott, you know, he just put up a quarterback three year with 22.9 points per game in plus six minus four scoring. Quarterbacks of the least 350 dropbacks. He was number one in completion percentage, tied for fifth in yards per attempt, tied for first per PFF in big time throw percentage, second in turnover worthy play percentage, 11th in average depth of target. So it's not like he's just dink and dunk. He's moving the ball and pushing the ball on the field. And, you know, he's adding two points per game with his legs. Not what he was doing pre injury, what, two years ago, but still giving you a little something. Like I'm going through the database and there's trades involving Dak Prescott in 12-team super flex leagues. This is over the last 24 hours. Jackson Smith and Jigba, 201 and 312 for Dak Prescott. I, I know a lot of people are still in on JSN with the, the change in regime there. Going to be a lot more 11 personnel, they're thinking. Hopefully a little faster pace. Mm -hmm. Even with Tyler Lockett still being there, I, you know, so the JSN hype train, I don't think it's been completely derailed. But if I can move even like high end a mid wide receiver two and a dart throw in 201 for a perennial top five quarterback on a per game basis sign me up another trade 110 and 203 for Dak Prescott and Chuba Hubbard what um, are we doing yeah yeah what what are we doing yeah so I, I agree my my exposure right now is like 30 percent across my entire dynasty portfolio like i said he's been a buy for me for about two years now that is not going to be changing it's been quiet for free agency i know they just got on the board earlier tonight uh with a defensive player and you, you know there there are question marks uh what are they gonna do at running back but it's gonna be the dak prescott show this year i know those question marks are on the the contract and how that's going to play out beyond 2024 but there might even be better situations out there for Dak Prescott, even though if if they were to move on and he loses CD Lamb, uh, you know, he could land in a situation that has even better weapons from top to bottom. So Dak Prescott coming in at like that quarterback 14 range for dynasty purposes, an absolute smash for me. Yeah, I love it. And you can find JB over at the Dynasty Theory at the Bauer Club on Twitter. Uh, give us a little Dynasty Theory plug here before we move on. I didn't even have time for a plug because I was so excited to talk about I know, that. I Prescott. Love it. Yeah. At the Bauer club on Twitter, dynasty theory. We're on YouTube. We're on the podcast feeds. We have the Patreon. We have a free discord. And then I just announced earlier today, we're going to be doing a live draft show on YouTube. The first two nights of the NFL draft, wow. uh, follow us, subscribe, make sure you're getting the notifications. We put out a lot of good content. Uh, you know, so if you enjoy dynasty, if you're listening to this show, you most likely do come check us out. Got to go check it out. We're, we're patrons. We, we, we fucks with the, uh, with the theory guys. Uh, they're putting out good stuff, good Patreon, all that jazz. They got a, a nice show they do every week or at least most weeks. The, most the, weeks. The, the day point. changes yeah. though. Yeah. Yeah. Pivot point every weekend. Uh, Mitch and I jump on, talk about opportunities across uh, the dynasty landscape where there might be some market inefficiencies and how you can capitalize with your league, league mates. So yeah, all, all, all great stuff. And, and to piggyback off the DAC conversation, I feel like I, we've been saying the same thing with Kyler Murray, like just that 100%. For, for a year and a half. Now we've been saying buy Kyler Murray. Now I have started to see some trades where Kyler's value is, is at least 
back to being kind of fair, but I think there's probably still some inefficiencies there with, with Kyler Murray uh, and, and Cardinals potentially trending up. Like we thought maybe Gannon and it might be another, it might be a joke, but clearly, you know, just, just some more like Dan Campbell like stuff where you got a couple sound bites and you're like, Oh, this guy's an idiot. And it's like, mm-hmm. well, he had them playing hard last year. I kind of like where they're going. They're in good positions in this draft. Um, to really surround Kyler with some stuff. And we still, Hollywood, you know, maybe the longer it takes for Hollywood to get out of there, the more likely is he's staying, you know, who knows? So uh, Kyler Murray, I think, would be the same kind of idea of what you were saying with Dak Prescott. So not one of my buy lows necessarily, but we've been saying it for a while, and I think it's kind of the same thing. Um, there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of good ceiling there with Kyler when he's healthy. So uh, my, I, my first buy low is more of a... a a unit as a whole. And it's something that I like to do. And it worked out really well last year. I bought a lot of the Texans and that really worked out. I also bought a lot of the giants that didn't really work out, but they were so cheap that it didn't really matter. And I'm okay with hanging on to Darren or uh, to Wandell Robinson this year to kind of see what happens. And, you know, Isaiah Hodgins and uh, Slayton and uh, who's the guy from Tennessee Hyatt, you know, drafted all those guys late in startups and who they didn't work out. Who cares? they're out of here but for all the Texans the Schultzes of the world and Nico Collins who nobody wanted and you know I I did draft some Robert Woods is in there and that didn't quite work out but you know you struck some gold there so my first buy low is Pittsburgh as a whole it just seems like I know Russ just got there and seems like people are kind of 50 50 on that Russ is either dead or you know they don't think he's dead and he can still be a starter probably better than Kenny but definitely better than Kenny Pickett at this point and Arthur Smith's offense, uh, while I know has been highly criticized, I think can fit what Russell wants to do. Now, the middle of the throw, the field throw stuff is a legit thing with Arthur Smith is where a lot of his stuff likes to go. And Russ doesn't necessarily like throwing there. But Q George Pickens on that outside. I mean, Russ has been top 10 in, in deep balls the last two years and Pickens is inside the top 10 of deep ball guys. I mean, there's not a better deep ball out there. Now you can kind of get back to that Russell Wilson of old of, hey, we're going to let the defense and the run game. We know we're going to run the shit out of the ball. Offensive line playing better at the end of last year for for Pittsburgh. Uh, Fryermuth coming in. You drafted the other tight end out of Georgia last year. I think Fryermuth is really, really undervalued. Tight end premium right now. Um, Pat Fryermuth is like 11th round in tight end premium. I mean, this is a guy who caught 80 balls two years ago, right? A year, year or two ago. Uh, George Pickens, stock will probably rise up a little bit here. Um, so maybe he won't be as much of a buy, but then as, as they add somebody else, cause Devante or Deontay just left. So I had him as a buy as well. We can maybe take that as a sidebar out of this conversation, but Pittsburgh offense as a whole, I like to buy into undervalued offenses as a whole, get as many pieces as I can. Jalen Warren's still pretty cheap. Um, even Najee Harris, pretty cheap right now. Um, I think 10th round as well for, for Najee Harris, um, in the FFD ADP right now. So, uh, nine, four, uh, post combine. So, you know, Najee's been thousand yards every year. I know no, nothing mm-hmm. sexy about Najee. Nobody cares about Najee, but Najee can catch at the end of the season. He was definitely playing a lot better after they got rid of Canada, uh, and what they do. And Arthur Smith's run game is, is got a good track record. And I think that's what, where they're going to live. And, and Russ can throw those moon balls, work off play action. Um, and you know, these two guys need to meet in the middle. Russ needs to throw it over the middle a little bit. And Arthur needs to know that that's not the most comfortable thing for him scheme in the middle and then throw it somewhere else. So Pittsburgh guy, what are your thoughts real quick on this? Yeah, overall, I mean, it's kind of puzzling the the whole Russell Wilson situation. I'm a Russell Wilson guy. He's one of my most rostered quarterbacks as well as Dak Prescott. But like the one year contract, the minimal money, but he had the luxury of doing that because Denver's on the hook. Right. And I'm sure whenever he met with Pittsburgh brass, they were able to kind of talk about, uh, you know, putting the team in a good situation with that team friendly deal. You have one year to prove it. I don't see Russ coming in and not being the starter here right. for Pittsburgh. I know a lot of people came out and said, I, I think the one was, uh, was it Greg Rosenthal. Like, you know, there's a better chance than people think that Russ is not going to be the starter. Did you watch the Pittsburgh Steelers play last year? Did you watch <laughs> Kenny Pickett? Did you watch him two years ago? Uh, you know, Kenny Pickett, I don't think he is the future of this team. And bringing in somebody like Russell Wilson, 
you know, they could have easily went out and just brought in like a Ryan Tannehill where that right. there's that familiarity with Arthur Smith. Sure. Could have stuck with Mason Rudolph, even, you know, could have brought Mason back. You know, he's he's out in Tennessee now. And I just Russell Wilson, you talk about the middle of the field. Uh, the, I saw a graph come out and it was talking about quarterbacks and the number of times they they targeted their first read last year mm -hmm. and Russell I think he was d dead last like he just he wasn't targeting his first read probably one of the reasons that he and Jerry Judy didn't necessarily mesh and probably a good thing that maybe Deontay Johnson isn't there right but uh right now as it stands I think George Pickens he is going to be a beneficiary from a value perspective and probably a production standpoint as well you look at what Russell Wilson was able to do with Cortland Sutton I think Cortland Sutton you know not a world beater by any means no. but he good had a player. very strong good player deep deep ball player uh very strong season especially from the touchdown department so I think we can kind of translate that to George Pickens yeah. who is He's freakish than, by Sutton standard. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Pickens, you know, Pickens then you, plus plus or, right. uh, or Sutton plus plus rather. Yeah, yeah, right, right. So you, you have Pickens, you have Pat Fryermuth, who I think right now he is, I think he's accurately priced even in tight end premium leagues. Uh, you know, they're, they're the health concerns with him yeah. from, from time to sure. time. Uh, you know, how is he going to mesh with Russell Wilson, who isn't, exactly known for targeting his tight ends, but it goes back to what you said case about the middle of the field. Uh, and, and I do think Najee and Jalen Warren, they're fine at where they are. It's going to be very interesting to see the pace of play with this offense, how many offensive plays they're getting off per game. If the defense comes to play, you don't really need the offense to go out there and put up a ton of points. Yeah. So you, you kind of really utilize the running game. So I, it's going to be interesting it, this is a make or break year for Russell Wilson. Oh, sure. He either bounces back or he's out of the league or he's a backup moving forward. Yeah. But I, 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 I think I'm okay with Pickens. I'm okay with Friar Muth at current cost. If we see any uptick, I am going to be having him in red on the, the dynasty theory. Selfie. Patreon yeah. tier list. Uh, but in, in the, End of the first round or, you know, the 20s in the second round, third round. I'd be shocked if the Steelers don't add a wide receiver. Yeah, they've been I think so it's gonna, good at that position. Over, I think it's going to be in the second round. And I, I think like, a, honestly, I think somebody like a Ricky Pearsall. I think somebody like we talked about him before the show, Malachi Corley in the third, maybe if he's available. I think those are guys that could really, uh, really help this offense. So it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they had two, you know. You know, a two, a two, two receivers in the draft, or or bring in a you know a cheaper veteran. Um, I mean, Tyler Tyler Boyd. He's a he's yeah. a Pittsburgh kid. Tyler Boyd, Pittsburgh it, kid. It, I mean, it, Curtis Samuel still out there, I think. Right, he hadn't signed anywhere. I mean, he's he's an okay uh, little piece for you. But Russell Wilson right now in, in the ADP for us at Superflex Tight End Premium twelve three right now. So just like I said, I mean, all these guys are so lowly priced that if any one of them breaks out, they're gonna you know so much over perform of where you drafted them that for me it's worth trying to suck up two or three pieces of them whichever three you like and seeing if if kind of one can hit so that's that's kind of a, a way I yeah like at, to, at to cost play. at current cost i think it kind of to your point it would be russ Najee harris and friar Muth based on the potential ceilings for all of them yeah. and then pickens i think we are going to see that spike in value right now but if you are going to go out and think about acquiring george pickens I would wait until after the NFL draft yeah, right. because they're, they're bringing somebody in. Yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. So I would, I think that's a good, that's a good way to, to segue out of there. Kind of how I started it off. So let, let me hit, hit me with the next, uh, buy low for, uh, the, the dynasty FF theory. Uh, you mentioned him earlier, Hollywood Brown coming off the heel injury, hitting IR at the end of the season between fantasy calc and dynasty daddy ADP. He's wide receiver 50 to 53. I'd be interested to see where he is in the ADP you've been putting together. Oh, it's cheap. It's a dirt cheap. You know, first five weeks of the season last year, 1.83 yards per route run. Then even before Kyler returned. He was at 0.96 between weeks six and nine. Then Kyler returning week 10, he was 0.89. But, you know, first five weeks of the season, 15 fantasy points per game in full PPR. I think there is that opportunity 
based on the potential landing spots here. Now, because of this wide receiver class coming in, the the high end talent, the depth, we kind of saw that with the way this free agent market's playing out right. outside of Calvin Ridley, whose agent is an absolute marvel, apparently. <laughs> uh, 50 million guaranteed, four years, 90 some million. But for Marquise Brown, we've seen the, the wide receiver two numbers, their mid wide receiver two, and you're seeing trades. Uh, straight up Zach Charbonnet, 206, 208. If I can pivot off of any of these running backs that people kind of see as, okay, if they get their chance, Zach Charbonnet, Kendra Miller, Zamir White, who, you know, I, I think the the Raiders are going to do something there, sure. you know, to bring somebody in to, to compete with Zamir. I would be okay moving any of them for Hollywood Brown and certainly that 207, 208 range in rookie picks in 12 team super flex tight end premium Hollywood Brown. I, I just, that wide receiver 50 price tag as he stands today, he's only 26 years old. Right. I think there is room for him to grow. And it's not crazy to think that coming back healthy, he could be back with Kyler Murray. And while it was very disappointing at the end of last season, I think he rebounds. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree a hundred percent. This again, if you've been listening to us, you know, I've been screaming this name at the mountaintop. Uh, I texted JB before we did this because I just I, did, I wanted to make I usually don't. I like to hear what everybody else has to say, you know, kind of as a surprise. Um, tell them what we're talking about. But then um, but then he, he a lot of the guys he named. I was like, oh, those are all on the buy list for me. So we're <laughs> we're simpatico here. Hollywood Brown pre combine was eight, nine super flex tight end premium. And then post combine right now, he is nine, nine. So, I mean, just in the you get to the point it's all old wide receivers then at that point when you're in your startup draft so i think all the all the trade targets that you just laid out i think are perfect he's still a little younger than that chris godwin deontay johnson kind of tier who are just a year or two older and he's had top five ppr seasons or at least stretches of seasons before his quarterback or he got hurt um so it's been mm -hmm. a little unfortunate here with some injuries and the way things have played out for hollywood brown but th i just feel like there is a huge potential market inefficiency here on what Hollywood Brown can deliver. We'll see what happens on the landing spot. Kansas City, it's the value is going to go through the roof. And will I be interested anymore? I don't know. Uh, but if he stays in Arizona, certainly interested. So on the next one for me, it's going to be, again, we were going to do this on Monday. These guys have been free agents. And where I've been seeing these guys go in startups, I've been screaming by top of the mountaintops every time we do a startup live mock or anytime I get a chance to talk about these guys. Um, and it's Josh Jacobs and, and Saquon Barkley. Now, I think the value on these guys has probably moved at least around at this point, right? Would you say that's probably fair-ish? Yeah, and I, I so think once it was, the... it was early sixth. I think we're probably moving at least to the early fifth-ish for these guys. What do you think? And not just the landing spots, but the contracts. Like Josh Jacobs getting four years, and again, the the details here. There's probably an out after two years with like every running back, right? But you, you get in a great situation in Green Bay. There's no other running backs there, really. Uh, you know, at first I was like, okay, he's at Green Bay. He's in Green Bay with Aaron, Aaron Jones. Jones. I yeah. moved him down a tier, actually, compared to where I thought. And then Aaron Jones left. And I was like, all right, Jacob, like right away, you're right back up there. Uh, but I, I think if anything, you know, yeah, they could be seen as a buy low. And you mentioned this before the show. You know, maybe somebody had a Jacobs for a while or a Barkley for a while and they weren't Barkley able to especially. move them. This window opens that opportunity. But, you know, I have some of these veterans, even if it's like an Aaron Jones, I'm throwing them out there on the trade bait to see what the offers are. And man, they've been gems. Like, I'm getting like, uh, they're rough. They're yeah. rough. But you, you have the opportunity to move on from some of these veterans especially if it reflects the price that you're going to see in the, the shift in ADP, which I agree. I, I think we're going to see at least around uh, on guys like Jacobs and Barkley, especially with the perception of this in, incoming rookie class. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, to your point, like you said, there's maybe it's not quite as good of a buy as it was because it, it moved up a little bit and the landing mm -hmm. spots were, were about as good as they can get for either one of those guys, I think. Um, 
but there's somebody on there out there with that's had Saquon for two years that hadn't been able to get a return on investment. So they're, they're probably willing to take a little less than market value to get Saquon off their team because they're either rebuilding or there's somebody who subscribes to the beauty contest of building a dynasty roster. Mm-hmm. And maybe they're not in position or win or they're just like, hey, I hate running backs because that's what everybody tells me to do. And so, so they're out of here. And it, look, if you're a rebuilder, take advantage of this sell it away. But if you're a competitor whose window's open for the next two or three years, I think buying these guys is a home run. I mean, yeah. Could they get hurt? Could they miss time? Sure. Have both guys missed time and been hurt for sure. But Jacobs is still only 26 turned it in February. So he'll be 26 all year, uh, all year long. It's not like he's 26 turning 27. Mm-hmm. Um, he's been, he was RB three and 22 average 20 points per game missed three games in 21 was still RB 13 14.5 a game and in 2020 he was RB eight missing two games with 15.4 so he's basically been an RB one his almost his entire career um, and now he's going to Green Bay and should be fruitful and now if you look at the efficiency stats for Josh Jacobs last year every all the arrows are pointing down I don't, Josh Jacobs sat out he was on a one year deal the team stunk. They Mm -hmm. changed coaches in the middle of the year. He had a good chunk there, and then all of a sudden he kind of fell off a little. I don't think Josh Jacobs has fallen off anywhere. Um, He's a really good player. He's a pretty good pass catcher. He can kind of do it all. They've now taken Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon and kind of molded them into into one here. Um, So I I think that's a great spot and and a great time to buy still buy Jacobs and Barkley even more so. Like I said, people have been spinning their wheels for probably two years on him, and, and he's 27, just turned it in February. He was... RB five, you know, in, in 22, um, in 23, RB 13 and RB one in 2018, back in the day, averaging 24 points per game and in 2019, 18.8 points a game. So this is a guy who on Philadelphia could easily average 20 points per game here. Um, right. You know, and, 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 and you might get the discount because, well, Jalen hurts is going to steal a lot of those rushing right. touchdowns. Jalen hurts. Isn't necessarily known to be one to target his running backs. And if you're going to give me that narrative discount, uh, I mean, sign me up. Oh, they, they, they lost Kelsey. They lose a hall of fame center. You know, I, I think Barkley, uh, you know, sign me up. If I could acquire at, what especially what his value was a week ago sure, sure. Um, now you're gonna have to pay a little bit more but if you're a competitor any you know I, I, a late first i would buy any, any of those guys for it and I, I think it'd probably take maybe a little bit more than that but like you said you don't know what you're getting like i like a lot of the box the mystery boxes at the end of the first round here they're fun uh but you know brian thomas is great he came out and, and crushed it at the combine but like if i'm a competitor do i want to roll the dice on saquon barkley or do i want to roll a rice you know, on, on Brian Thomas and, and somebody wants Brian Thomas more than they want Saquon. hundred percent. And, and you, you're, you're potentially getting the discount now as well. You know, we're in that time period between free agency and the NFL draft where, well, so much can still change. Yeah. These guys got a contract, but what if they do bring in like a Trey Benson or, you know, any, whoever, but this year more than any, like none of these running backs are going to come in and, and make Saquon Barkley irrelevant. Yeah. None of them are going to come in and make Josh Jacobs the two on this team, you know, uh, in, in green Bay. So I I think the, the optics really change here and it could present a nice opportunity that if you find a manager that is looking to cash out because they haven't been able to is trending in a direction where the team is looking to get younger. They're a little concerned still with the NFL draft and they just don't want running backs you very well could get a nice price on either of those guys. Yeah. And I'm not necessarily opposed depending on the, you know, I have a ton of him already, but like an Aaron Jones, yeah. like, like you might be able to get him for a late second plus, right? It's the one year contract. It's Minnesota. What Minnesota, are they? They have, Sam they don't have a quarterback, you know? Yeah. So I, I think these veterans kick the tires. I now more than ever might be the safest, uh, time in terms of like March, any year, 23, 2022, any year prior to go out and acquire veteran running backs pre NFL draft. Yeah. Because typically it's the riskiest, but I don't think so this year. Right. So two things to close. And and one of those are kind of my points, you know, the community as a whole, you know, certainly is not going to value both of these guys of being 26 year old running backs. But sometimes I think you actually want to win the game uh, again, instead of having the roster beauty pageant. And these guys have been, those workhorse style guys who can be 
the 16 to 22 point a game guys super efficient Saquon Barkley is all awesome. Saquon Barkley can have a similar impact to CMC on a team he's got that skill set he's not CMC by any means but he can catch a ton of balls he's awesome in space he's been on a dog shit team in a dog shit situation um and Josh Jacobs same kind of like the Raiders have been kind of up and down but he's been out there being one of the only steady consistent forces and then to close uh, the rookie class just doesn't possess any of these real bell cows that we're seeing. Everybody is kind of in the same boat saying it could be Brooks. It could be Benson as those guys. It could be Wright or 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 Allen. It could be any of those guys. But I think we saw with the free agent market of the running backs in the actual NFL kind of what it is. There really isn't that those guys that anybody rest necessarily trusts, which, you know, a lot of people are going with the committee approach. But. No, like you said, I don't think any of these guys are going to come in and there's no way that these guys just spent up on those two guys and then draft Brooks and or Benson at this point, you know, Philly and Green Bay. That is like I just I just don't see it. And and the NFL has kind of signaled to you, much like you said, with the wide receivers, strong wide receiver class. So free mm -hmm. agent wide receivers may be a little slow to get the money. Plus, maybe they're trying to drive that that market that the NFL owner is trying to drive the receiver market down a little bit of saying, hey, let's get a bit out of control, guys. Uh, <laughs> and now the running back market is is OK for them to dabble. It's, you know, it's they're still getting OK money, but they're not getting 15 million a year anymore. And they kind of came out and said, hey, we're going to prioritize some of these guys. They flew off the shelves. Um, yep. And and so, you know, that, that's kind of my spiel in, in closing here. You got anything? Yeah, else it, was, we move it on? was the first day of legal tampering. They went out and they made sure to get their running backs and. I mean, Josh Jacobs, they, they released that at like 12.05, like five minutes after legal. <laughs> right. like, like, holy cow. Um, but like last year, the year prior, running backs were getting franchise tag. They weren't getting three, four-year extensions or, or new contracts in different situations. This year, like you said, these teams made a point to go out and get these running backs that they believe can actually be difference makers. Derrick Henry in Baltimore, is going to be scary yeah. because Casey, I think you could average five and a half yards per carry in that <laughs> offense. Derrick Henry might be popping off 10 yards a carry this year. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I agree. And you know, to, to the running back point, we had a period there, especially, you know, you and I are around the same age. It w Running back was king for so long. Oh, 100%. And, then, and then everything shifted. So we have to shift it. My, I might've been a year late on shifting. We, you have to shift. But also, I think what helped drive that shift is there was already a notion of like, oh, running backs, you know, eh, I don't know if they're valuable. But we also had a bunch of running. We had Todd Gurley and David Johnson and and some some Le injuries. Le'Veon Bell. Le Bell kind of fell off because he moved around. Some injuries hurt, hurt these guys, and they were the big guys that everybody was invested in. Well, now some of these guys, like obviously Saquon's been a little banged up, but, you know, some of these other bell cows have been kind of hanging around and been pretty good and pretty productive obviously Alvin Kamara got suspended last year but like that class of 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 the kind of McCaffrey's and and Barkley and Jacobs and you know just some of these other bell cows are now you know we we and Derrick Henry into his 30s now is kind of you know Austin Eckler was hurt last year so people don't want anything to do with him because he looks slow but you know he had a 19 20 mile an hour run in there so he mm -hmm. still had it you know so I think some of these running backs are going to help push into their thirties and be like, Hey, you know, sometimes shit happens, man. And it certainly is a lot more volatile at that position, but it's nice to see maybe a hair swing back in that direction. And then look at the group of younger guys, not to get too sidetracked here, but look, we have this really strong group of, uh, Bijan, Jameer Gibbs, Brees Hall, uh, 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 Jonathan Taylor right. that are kind of, you could throw in Travis CTN heck even throw in Kyron Williams. If you want to at this point, these young guys, uh, well, Kyron's going to ruin this next point, but with <laughs> pedigree, you know, he, yeah, yeah, he did, yeah, yeah. You know, fifth round draft capital, but with pedigree that are producing early in their careers, Jonathan Taylor, when he's been healthy, he's been tremendous. And the Indianapolis Colts, they saw the importance he had to that team and they showed him with his contract. Um, yeah, I mean, so, you can uh, throw Jonathan Taylor right in here and say, hey, th he used to be a guy you had to spend three first round picks on. Now you might be able to throw a mid first, a second and a third next year and maybe get Jonathan Taylor because people are, hate running backs. And there's and people that are there's people that are going to prefer that 107 this year, to Jonathan Taylor, whenever they're staring at Roma Dunze on the clock, when they're st staring at maybe a Brock Bowers and two PPR because those top seven are so valued right now, like some of the deals that we see as 
people are on the clock as rookie drafts approach, they're going to look crazy, especially when you look at the running back market. Yeah. Yeah. All right, give me uh, give me give me another buy low here, JB. Let's keep this train moving. We got derailed, but that happens when we get together. So, what do you got? So, two things. One, I'm, I've I've been looking at my phone throughout the episode for two reasons. One, to see if any news pops up while we're we're live. Mm-hmm. But two, I've been having some internet issues whenever I have too many tabs up on my computer. <laughs> uh-huh. So I have my tier sheet up on my phone. So if you see me going through and looking, I don't want you to think I'm being a jag off over here. <laughs> so I just want to let you know and I your like listeners, it. I don't want them to be like, what's this dude doing? Uh, so just to clear that up, but yeah. I'm going to be super quick with this one because we could talk for hours here tonight. Uh, another wide receiver, Christian Kirk, wide receiver, 43, uh, Love you know, it. Out of the slot, averaging 2.18 yards per out run last year, uh, a little bit lower, a little below two if he's outside from the slot. He was only out of the slot 71%. I think some of those issues came from like Zay Jones being banged up. At the time that we put this list together initially, I wasn't sure if Ridley was going to be returning, Same. even though Gabe Davis was going to Jacksonville. So I do believe they target another outside receiver. But and, and via the NFL draft. But I don't think we're going to see that weird situation that we saw in week one last year, if you remember. Oh, yeah. We're like Kirk, Christian nothing. Kirk ran, like he did nothing. He was on the field for 60% of the snaps. He has shown how valuable oh. he can be, especially with Trevor Lawrence, who, you know, he's looking for these guys to create separation. It's going to be a huge Christian Kirk year, a huge Evan Ingram year, mm. despite him being. You know, on Undervalued. the older side. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you talk about two PPR where Fryermuth was going. Evan Ingram, he's somebody that I'm going still looking out uh to go out and acquire. But Gabe Davis coming in, he's not a threat to to Christian Kirk. No. If anything, you get you get the field stretcher, maybe right. it opens things up in the middle. You talk about uh Russell Wilson and you know, not really looking towards the middle of the field, you know. Trevor Lawrence is looking for those separators. They're, he's looking for those underneath routes, and that's going to be Christian Kirk. And we're going to see, I, I think, a really nice season from him, especially wide receiver 43. He's, what, 27 years old? Yeah. Give me two more three, two or three more years. I'm all frazzled here talking about Christian Kirk. Uh, I, I was laughing. I think I'm. if you look over right there, I think I'm the only person in America that has – uh, what is an 11 by eight frame picture of Christian Kirk signed? <laughs> I love it. I got it off pristine auction for like $9. I'm like, I have to have, Gotta it. have it. No, my my wife's like, what are you, what are you doing here? <laughs> are doing? Uh, but yeah, Christian Kirk wide receiver 43, uh, him and Hollywood, two wide receivers that I'm targeting. Yeah. Same. same. We're, we're, we're a Kirk, we're a Kirk show. So let, I'm glad that again, that we texted beforehand, um, Let's see where Christian Kirk, Christian Kirk, eight twelve. So right around that Hollywood area, where same, same kind of thing. Just you, you, you can get in a startup and bang out Hollywood and Christian Kirk in your eighth, ninth round, ninth, tenth round. Like what a what a duo there to just be great wide receiver twos, threes for your team here uh, in in dynasty kind of moving forward. So I I love that uh, pickup. Uh, so before we started. We were doing this on Monday. Like I said, we pushed it back. I had Calvin Ridley as a buy. Um, and now I, I I like Jacoby Myers. I slid him in there just for another buy. But I don't really want to talk about him because he's he's going in the 12th round. I think he's very undervalued. He's still 27, 13.7 points per game. Had 106 targets, 71 receptions, 800 yards, and 8 TDs. Renfro and was just released. Not that he was exactly... Right you know, that relevant here towards the end of his time in, in Vegas, but that, that's a plus. Right. 12th, 13th round startup pick. He's just a guy you can start week in, week out in PPR. Um, and, you know, they had a weird season. Now Gardner Minshew's in there. I don't know what they're going to do, but, you know, hey, at least Gardner will sling it around the yard. You got to hold on to your butts when he's in there. Uh, but he'll sling it around a little bit. So I like I like Jacoby, but I did want to quick touch on Calvin Ridley. And obviously the news went today that he went to Tennessee so I, I think I, I'm not sure he's necessarily on my list at this point as a potential, like a target to buy low. I would if the price was right. But what do you what are your thoughts here on on Ridley real quick? Anytime we see situations like this, it just a change of scenery, something new. Like you talked about the mystery box with rookies. People get excited for for something new. And with Calvin Ridley going to Tennessee, like everybody's shitting on on Will Levis. 
you know, that, that offense, they, they really didn't do that much, but you have an opportunity with Callahan coming in as the head coach, uh, probably going to run a lot more 11 personnel, maybe sure. be a little bit more up tempo. You, I mean, they're you kind of telling nice, you that, right? You know, yeah, three it, wide receivers, it, two cat pass catching backs. They got it. They got, they drafted a, a, a an offensive lineman last year. They went and signed Cushenberry. They're probably going to draft another offensive lineman early this year. So, you know, hey, I, I, anyway, continue. No, no, no. I, I think they're all, I mean, right, right on target there. Um, but I had Calvin Ridley right around that 201, 202 before. I still have him there because he is a 29-year-old wide receiver. And I think based on the fact that people want change, they just want something different, there's going to be excitement because of that, especially because of that contract he got. I know a four-year deal is going to really be uh, ring some alarms for people in, in a good way because, yeah, he's 29, but four-year contract, all that guaranteed money – and we know what he can do. I think it was 2020, 2021. He popped off for like 1,600 yards or whatever it was. I forget the ex- you know exactly what it was. Um, but you know, I am. I believe he's going to push a little bit more towards a sell. Yeah. You know, I, I think yeah. his. I, I think his perceived production isn't taking into account the risk necessarily that should be we should be taking into account with Will Levis, who was extremely you know, volatile last year, exactly. uh, 59% completion percentage. But again, there are a lot of changes in Tennessee. So I very well might be wrong on that one, yeah. but I would be a little bit more conservative as opposed to going out and buying a Calvin Ridley at any type of inflated price. Right. I, I, I tend to agree, which is why I kind of wanted to talk to it. You know, the reception perception came out and you know, he's got the whole uh, success by route tree and it's a pretty much all green. So I think, you know, I think that people got caught up. He's a bit of a more was kind of the post type sleeper for me, which is why I thought he was a buy because people kind of got out on him because they thought his year was so bad. It's like, well, he went over a thousand yards and there's like a whole two minute clip of what could have been with Calvin Ridley mm-hmm. last year. Um, and he missed two years. So I thought he could be a buy, but I think I'm, I'm kind of uh, with you there. So why don't you? And he, was, he was just under fourteen hundred yards in twenty twenty. Yeah. Si- not sixteen hundred. So I don't know where I pulled that from. But a, a really I think a really good player and, and was, you know, I just at least what the Titans are doing now is putting a situation together where Will Levis, we can see what we have. We don't have to play a guessing game of exactly. He doesn't have enough. He doesn't have this. They're not doing that. You know, you get a couple more offensive linemen in there and you've got nuke and Traylon and, uh, Kyle Phillips and you, you now you've added Calvin Ridley and you got Spears and Pollard and Chig. So you have, you got options everywhere with a lot of really good athletes. Um, if they can put together, you know, you'll get to see what you have in Will Levis. So I, I kind of like that. Uh, so give me, give me your last buy so we can close up shop here. Last one, tight end I position. It. I love Cole, it. Cole Komet, he's tight end 12 or 13, depending on if you look at Fantasy Calc or Dynasty Daddy. He only turned, he just turned 25 years old. Talking about contracts, he's under contract through 2027. Last year, 10 of his 16 games had at least 40 yards. He was ninth in uh, receiving yards last year among tight ends. Seventh in yards per route run. Now look at this this uh, progression here. His rookie year, he was at 0.94 yards per route run. 2021, 1.23. 2022, 1.27. 1.69 this last year. Is it going to go up to 1.8-ish? I think so. I think. Uh, yeah. Now he gets one of the greatest, you know, assuming they don't stick with fields and trade the 101. They they're, he is assumed, they're drafting Caleb. He is assumed to get one of the best quarterback prospects, love him or hate him, Caleb Williams, and he doesn't have a quarterback throwing him the ball that the entire NFL sees as a backup. Right. The, the Justin Fields trade market tells you everything you need to know. Uh, so cool. Come on. I tell you about the, the uh, per route run efficiency metrics in 2023 he was only 16th in total routes run last year so there is room to grow Mm. he hasn't missed a game since he came into the league in 2020 knock on wood now you know he's probably gonna like lose a limb or something so (laughs) I, i jinxed him but i think it's very realistic 80 catches 900 yards in 2024 high level projection uh you know, in 2023, he had 15.25 points per game in two PPR settings. That's good for wide receiver 18. If he were a wide receiver, I know they brought in Gerald Everett, but if that drives the cost down at all, 
sign me up because uh, Gerald Everett, he, he's okay. You know, I think he has a, a going back to his college, he has a decent profile. He's been in the yeah. NFL for quite some time. He's had some good stretches. But Cole Komet, he has grown year after year exactly what you want to see in a young tight end, and he's entering his prime. Yeah. So give me Cole Komet. He's going after George Kittle in startups. Hell, I love him, but I'm taking Cole Komet over Travis Kelsey if I have if I have to choose. If I have to choose, give me Cole Komet. We have Cole Komet, and I've been screaming this on all, all our podcasts too. Cole Komet, 9-5 and 10-4 in tight end premium startups. Like... This is a guy who last year, I know DK had it, and I've said this a million times, DK had a down year. He finished a few points off in just 1.5 premium of DK Metcalf's overall mm -hmm. points scoring total. So much like you said, I think that he would have been basically wide receiver 15 or 13 in, in um, you know, points per game and, and overall for uh, if you if you went tight end to wide receiver uh, point scoring threshold. So Cole Komet to the absolute moon. I, I love it. He would have been on, you know, all those guys you named were on my buy list. So, so I really love kind of what you were saying. I like it when, you know, we're all on the same page. Obviously you want some discourse to argue with, uh, but uh, not, not today because I, I loved all those guys, man. And, and even got a couple other little nuggets in there for some other buy lows as well. So we're really, I'm sure uh, we'll argue a little bit next time. Yeah. All right. Well, be sure to like subscribe, comment below. We got the Patreon. We got $5 holler. We got the discord and then, my man, uh, JB, tell us where you can find everything on the way out. At the Bauer Club on Twitter, at Dynasty Theory FF. Uh, that's the show's handle on Twitter. And then we got the Patreon. We got the Discord. We got uh, Dynasty Tears weekly episode of The Pivot Point, which we, we mentioned to, to lead off the show. Uh, we're doing our draft party. Uh, we got a lot of great stuff lined up, so come check it out. Be sure to do so. Always fun. Appreciate you, JB, and we will catch you next time. Peace.